Okay, everyone, I know it's been a long wait, but it seems we are finally here. We are here in the Epicenter SCA Open Qualifiers number two grand final. Geek fam, they were eliminated early yesterday, but now they fought right back through the people who eliminated them, and they're up against the young'uns, the under-18s here in Team Orca. So let's jump right into the bands and see it's how it's going. Geek fam, they've decided to ban out the Abaddon as well as the Kunkka. I mentioned before, Kunkka is Mamang's favorite hero. He has it level 25. He plays it amazingly. And Orca, they're getting rid of that Drow Ranger, so Raven isn't going to be able to play it. Radiant team ban. Yeah. Okay. So they do ban out the Oracle. We saw Geek Fam play that very. There was a Geek Fam who played that very successfully. Sorry, it's just been so long that, that last game. Um, I think they need to get rid of the Doom. Because uh, both these teams, we've seen them play the Grimstroke. So I don't think you want to let the Doom through. And, but either the Doom or the Enigma are going to get through. And if Zephyr gets his Enigma, I think he plays that hero very well. I think that's first pick material for Geek Fam. If it goes through the draft here. So Geek Fam, they have first pick. And I think they take Doom or Enigma, whatever hero gets through. This is a best of one. So they ban out the Doom, and I think they go for the Zephyr Enigma right here. Dire team pick. Enigma. You know, you know, I'm mainly a play-by-play -play caster, but sometimes I'm good. Sometimes my analysis is spot on. Anyway, okay, so Orca, they see the Enigma, they must know this was happening. I think they might just take the Grimstroke, because they really enjoy that hero. Um... And then maybe, uh, I feel Sand King's high priority, but I haven't seen a lot of Orca, so I don't know what they favor picking. Uh, I wish I did know. I, w I would tell you. Dire team pick. Dusk. Okay, so they're going back for the Tusk. We saw them play this on New World Order on the four position. I think it's a bit interesting they take it this early because I don't think it's, you know, like a Grimstroke. a big ban. And they do take the Grimstroke. So uh, the Tusk is obviously good because he has that save. Very strong in the lane thanks to the help of that tag team. And the Grimstroke, we've seen, uh, we saw them play it last game. They comboed it up with the Reaper Scythe. So I think if you're Geek fam, you either want to take the Batrider here or the Necrophos. Otherwise, you're forced to ban both of them. I think Geek Fan can get away with just taking the Batrider. Well, we saw how well they played it last time. They picked it in this four position, and I think it's really good. And then you could just ban out um, the heroes who deal with it. Actually, no, you don't even need to ban the Abaddon. The Oracle's already banned out. You've already banned the Abaddon. I think this is a great Batrider pick for Geek Fan because it forces Team Orca to basically pick Juggernaut, and then you can just ban Juggernaut. You can even ban Juggernaut in the next phase, and then there's no one who can really lane against the Batrider. Disruptor. But instead, they're going for the Disruptor. That is... That's interesting. I haven't seen them play at this qualifier. I, I've seen it played at the Major. I mean, VP loved that hero on solo. And so it offers you a lot of harass in the lane. The Thunderstrike is a really powerful nuke early on. And then obviously it has the catch if you're going to win fights. Ten seconds remaining. Also worth noting is that, you know, Disrupt can obviously set up for a good black hole remaining. with that kinetic field or a static storm after a good black hole. Team ban. And an Alk ban. Okay, so it seems Geek Fam know a bit more about Orca than we do. Because only select teams do like the Alchemist and they must be one of them. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team ban. Dire team ban. 
Ah, uh, so they do ban out the Necros themselves. So I wonder who they're going to pair with this Grimstroke. You're really looking for something to try and pair with his ultimate. I, I mean, he is very strong even if you don't have specific pairings with his ultimate, you know. Uh, you could just build items, get that double Yules, get that double Atos. But I really, really, really would like to see a combination with something like a Batrider. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Team Orca taking their time here now, easing into their reserve time with this third pick of the draft. I think we'll probably expect to see an offlaner here, unless they want to take a carry, they think they'll be contested. And that's what they've done, they've taken control wall of a carry who will be contested. Obviously, very good with the tusk because you get the the slows of the um, the ranged whirling axes comboing up uh, with the tag team. So in the lanes, that's a lot of uh, slow power. I also like the Grimstroke with the Troll Warlord. You're able to make him move faster with that surge forward thanks to the ink, ink swell, and they do take the Bat Rider. I thought it was a great Bat Rider game. I thought they would take it instead of Disruptor, but they are taking it here on the third. I. I think it's a big mistake there from Orca not banning out this hero. Because Troll Warlord cannot lane against Batrider. I think he's going to have a very tough time. Unless they try lane him. I think they could they could run the try lane against the Bat. Ten seconds remaining. And that might allow them to be able to win it. Radiant team pick. Omni Knight. Oh, there's an answer to the Batrider I didn't think about. The Omni Knight. Okay. Uh, he does have a purge, so he's able to get rid of that lasso, as well as the sticky napalm charges. So they're definitely going to try and match up this Omni Knight versus the Batrider. So I think we can expect to see some musical lanes here, as they try looking for that. Uh, lots this major. Uh, I, I actually don't think, I don't think anyone knows, uh, uh, Deadly Squandrel. I, I don't think that's, uh, I don't think that's been released yet. I, uh, I. I just... Yeah, it's 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 not been announced. Valve hasn't told the allocation. Dire team back. Naga siren. Oh wow. Okay, so Geek Fam, it looks like they're gonna go for the late game. We haven't seen this yet on Raven. But I do believe in his ability to carry. We've seen it today. Able to put teams on his shoulders. Oh, actually. Oh, this is so good. I, I, I didn't think about it properly. But the Naga Siren. You don't even have to take it that late. This hero with the song. You can set up for a great Static Storm. Or you set up for a great Enigma Ultimate. The song is an amazing setup here. Oh, wow. that's a, This is a great Naga Siren pick. With the Enigma and the Disruptor, they must have had this planned from when they saw the Disruptor. Radiant Team Ban. But doesn't it say 15 teams from the six regional qualifiers? And then uh, two teams from each of the qualifiers. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's only 13 teams. That leaves two teams unallocated. Ten seconds <laughs> remaining. Anyway. So they've taken the Naga Siren. They're going for some more bands. They get rid of the puck. Does that indicate what they're picking mid? Maybe something like a, someone who doesn't deal well with silence? Maybe like a Storm Spirit or maybe an Ember Spirit? Although I don't think you want either of those heroes versus the Disruptor, the Enigma, and the Batrider. That, and the Nog, they, they have a fair amount of catch and control for him. I'm just trying to think what this, uh, this Puck Ban signifies.
So we're still waiting here. Geek fam, they're taking their time. Obviously, this band does go right into their last pick. So they are considering both those things at once. Radiant team pick. Get rid of the Lash. Okay. Dire team pick. Sand. And they go for the Sand King. Oh, okay. So this is either a Batrider or a Sand King mid. This could be the Mushi Batrider mids. But then I think they just run the Omni Knight mid, don't they? I mean, I like the Sand King because it did feel like they were lacking um, a bit of control. Because all most remaining. of their control was uh, either Black Hole uh, or the Batrider Lasso. So, remaining. you know, every real hard control um, was an ultimate. So the Sand King just gives them that little bit more control with the Biro Strike. So I, I think it's looking like a mid Batrider. We have seen Mushi play it before. But I mean, you could just as much run the Sand King mid. I saw a game of that the other day. So I think it might be mid Sand King. Tide Hunter. Choose your hero. Oh, okay, Tide. Oh, <laughs> okay, so it's the off lane Tide. They're planning to run the Omni Knight in the mid lane. So I think you probably want to run the Sand King versus the Omni Knight and the Batrider versus the Troll. I, I think we're definitely going to see musical lanes. I'm pretty sure of that fact. Uh, Green Wax Computer Science. They are taking their time, and it looks like Scam has been the one to take the Sky Sand King. Chef! 10 seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. This is a this is a pretty unique draft here by Geek Fam. I, I think they were just thrown a bit by the Omni Knight, and you can see that Mamang he's taken the Omni. They they know it's the Mushi Bat, and Omni's gonna have a fine time versus this Bat Rider. He's able to purge the Sticky Napalm off himself, as well as the heal. I think I think he's just fine. That Heavenly Grace people underestimate the amount of uh, regen it gives you. It gives you real staying power in the lane. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Green Wax. But I, I don't think I'm going to be the one to save it. Let's be honest. So, we're watching the introductions. Oh, the Tusk. Oh, he lost his last match. Only seven commands. But it does look like this is a, is a bit of a smurf. And it seems he fed a game as a pudge. That's uh, that's not cool. No feeding. So everyone, welcome to the grand finals. It looks like they're finally starting. <laughs> with obviously, you have to start with a pause and a whole load of sebs. While we wait for Dead Fox to reconnect. Dead Fox, he was great in the last game, so I trust he'll be a great trouble forward. Mamang Doya, they are pogging it. They're pretty happy. Oh my god, so many voice lines. Voice lines, it's great. A sour note. You're in deep now. Anyway, we're still waiting for Dead Fox to reconnect. I hope he's back quickly. Yeah, actually, you know what? You know what? While we wait for him to reconnect, uh, how about we gamble? You, you guys like some gambling? I think I should have some uh, some treasures. Do I have any treasures left or have I spent them all? Here we go. Here's a treasure. Let's let's open a treasure. Let's see how I dream. And then, and then when I do badly on stream, I have it recorded. 
And, oh, am I going to get them? Am I going to get them? Is it just faking me out? Yeah, it's, it's, it's just faking me out. Will I get the Nyx Assassin or the Ultra Rare Drow, guys? And I'm done. I I don't have I don't have enough levels to uh, apparently I don't deserve. I don't deserve you, Drow. No matter how beautiful you are. I'm sorry, we won't be together. Absolutely okay, so we've had a bit of fun. Perfect. Encourage some gambling, and we still haven't reconnected on Dead Fox. I, th I think you definitely have to open more than six to get the Ultra. <laughs> if you want me to continue gambling, I accept donations. <laughs> but yeah, uh, PP's Appa break. What? Bippa's Appa Barack. Uh, I don't know what that means. But we're, we're st oh, oh, he's back. He's back. We don't need to, we don't need to talk anymore. Let's go, Orca. They're ready to go, Geek Fam. Okay, Grand Finals underway. It feels like it's taken forever to get here, but we are here. <laughs> A bang CP. Th thank Absolutely you very much perfect. for telling me. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, but Slayer, it feels so much better to get it yourself, you know, than have to buy it outright. You know, it, you know, it feels, boom. it feels way nicer. You know you die. Die. Yet your failure lives on. Anyway, we're following the Naga Siren. So, sorry, yeah, let's discuss this. The laning matchup. It looks like they're putting the Raven Naga Siren mid. They have an idea this is happening. And that's why Ridiculous is uh, going to the mid lane with the Anchor Smash. But a Naga Siren with a bunch of levels, I think, can kill a Tide. A uh, with a bunch of Riptide Illusion. Uh, they do physical, don't they? Uh, no, it's magical damage. Uh, so that means he won't reduce it with Kraken Shell. And it also reduces armor. So in this top lane, it looks like they're starting out with Skem. This is a lane where I think you could you could get a kill with uh, all these heroes together. The stun, as well as the Thunder Strike, is a lot of damage. But it looks like it's just a classic two for two rune exchange. And they've sent Mushi to the bottom lane. He's really hoping to match up against the Troll Warlord. But I think as soon as they see the bat bottom, the Troll Warlord is going to go to the top lane. I mean, last year I'd level 500 and I got uh I got the the level one ultra rare, so I guess maybe I was just really lucky with it. Okay, so Mushi is here in the bottom lane. Is Trouble Lord gonna stay in this lane? Okay, so it looks with the full tri lane. Are they just going for going for the first blood before the troll rotates? They need to be careful here. The Kraken shell. Going to be, uh, sorry, the Anchor Smash is going to be fairly good against Raven. Needs to be careful about tanking it up. Too much damage, but obviously the Riptide is magical damage. So even though you lose your Anchor Smash, you does need to be careful here on Ridiculous. Ridiculous trying to kill those illusions, but he's going to take a bunch of damage from this. He probably needs a hood pretty damn soon. And in this top lane, it's just Scam versus uh, Mamang. And because he's against um, a melee laner, he's gone for the Caustic Finale. You might have noticed, Sand Kings nowadays, they usually go for 4-4. And they skip the Caustic. But when you're in a one-on-one -on -one lane like this... Oh, sorry. Meanwhile, Mushi, six stacks. Over there, is he going to get first blood? No! New World Order is able to get it. Not able to get the first blood. Solo there is Mushi so low on Liam. And Mushi just overextends. The Raven, ridiculous. <laughs> Going for that. As the Kraken Shell now gives him 12 extra damage block. But really just needs to be careful. He's going to try and anchor smash away these illusions, but it's not quite enough. 
Still only level one in the Riptide. Once he gets level two, I think Ridiculous might actually be in trouble here. Because uh, it's, it's only a 10 damage. It's not a massive increase, actually. The Centaur just stomping everyone there. And play hard, just laning here with Mushi. But Mushi having a very rough time, especially after that first death. Top lane, how is it going? It seems. Wow! No I didn't realize it was 4 to 0. Have you seen this disparity? 19 to 4 to the 4 to 0. Scam is absolutely bullying Mamang up here. And Raven in the mid lane. Pretty even to ridiculous here. Is going for the stack. All now to stack camp. Oh, no. He did manage to get it. I thought he might have a bit of trouble. And Mamang, even with that regen, is having real trouble just sitting in this level 2 sandstorm. New World Order tried to rotate middle. Now they've seen him. Are they going to get a bit aggressive here on the bottom lane? It looks like not. Mushi has learned his lesson. Oh, Scam. He's just going to cut the wave, I think. No, he's going to the pull. He's farming the wave and the camp at the same time. Oh, wow. Oh, Brie Larson farming the Naga Siren stacks. That's that's just, that's really heads up play. Not very nice, you know, like, but really heads up play. I really like that. But at the same time, Mamang trying to pull his own. Oh, and we do miss actually a kill on the bottom lane. Mushi only on 30 health. Are they going to find it? They go for the stroke of fate and they go for the wrong direction. Mushi actually went into the trees over here. And now Raven, two points into the Riptide, one point into the Mirror Image. Eventually it will do 60, so it might be enough first inside. But he is just so damn tanky. Amang actually pretty healthy over here. Obviously has the Heavenly Grace, so you get that status resistance as well as the regen. And that's what allows you to stay in the lane. The Naga Siren with the Arcane Rune is probably going to use that to continue to farm the jungle as well as the mid lane. But worth noting that while these lanes seem pretty even for Geek Fam, Geek Fam are winning the lanes while Zephyr jungles. Zephyr hasn't been taking part in this laning phase at all. He's just been in the jungle the entire time. And we are coming up to the 5 minute mark, so we might see something happen on this bottom lane. They see play hard, but they're not able to get on top of him. And over here, it looks like it's going to be... Uh, Mamang. Uh, dude, f five minutes. Okay, so he eventually does go back to get this rune. I thought he would have taken it first. And he just TPs back to his tower. So, Ridiculous has completed his lads. This is part of the advantage of being the mid lane. Because he's a mid tide hunter, he's still play. He's still the off lane player, uh, oh, handing over the ring over to Zephyr, and he's gonna pick up the helm of the Dominator. They do have the catapult. I'm curious if they go to Dominator and oh, on the bottom lane, they're going to be able to kill Lym. He's sitting in the fire. Is affected by the science over here on Mushi, but he's gonna be okay. So now he has his Dominator creep. I don't think they're gonna be able to. Uh, kill Mamang, but they are able to harass him a fair bit. With this, Vladimir is ridiculous. Can definitely fight up against the Naga Siren. <laughs> I'm a in his prime. And back here on the bottom lane, Mushi. Still level 4. So is Dead Fox, but he's been in a tri lane. And they do manage to find Mamang in the end. Just the damage coming from the Eidolons. They didn't... He, and the Midnight Pulse. Scam, level 6, uses the Epicenter. Yeah, uh... Yeah, Larry Legend. Unfortunately, I'm not a Twitch partner, so I, I don't get anything from the ads. So free or free to use ad blocker when watching Twitch. No sorcery is available. <laughs> on my channel. Other people you should probably support. But it's only if you're partnered that the ads help you. Top lane. Do they have any actually detection here for Scam? 
They they don't. I don't see any sort of dust or anything. As again, he's not afraid of anything. He's going to try and kill off that task. Only one point in the poison touch, so I don't think it's enough. And they even put up the tree. That's really cool, players. You world of old scam has an idea. He doesn't actually have any mana for a bar strike. And he's not close to it. And this tree is still here. You can eat it. You get bonus regen. Even if someone else plants the tree, I have tested it. So ridiculous. Just to get even more mana and soaring. So he can just spam his anchor smash of cooldown. Which he is doing anyway. But the Naga Siren. It looks like Raven has retreated to the jungle. Giving the mid lane over to play hard to get some well-deserved levels. Because Zephyr, he's just had an absolutely free time. Radiance like this laning phase, it's three for two. But just Zephyr, absolute free farm. You can see he's, you know, he's third on his team for CS, fourth overall. Amang has arcane boots. So he has more than enough mana to be able to sustain. And in the mid lane, we have a black hole. It's going to allow them to kill the green stroke. Mushi's coming in, has lasso. They're sitting in the midnight pulse. And with Raven, that is enough to take down. Ridiculous. Zephyr making the rotations needed from a four position. Spending most of his time farming, but just coming and able to clear up those three kills with the help of the rest of his team. LYM is there with the stroke of fate to try and push back Raven, but he doesn't care. Oh, and the glimpse you just TP'd in and you're right back to Fountain. That is the most satisfying thing when you are playing Disruptor. So Mamang, Arcane Boots, Enchanted Mangoes. He's had a bit of a rough time here up against the Sand King. I think, you know, we can switch over to CS. And you can see what's going on. So the Troll Warlord is doing very well, but not as near as the Naga Siren. Sand King and Zephyr actually above Mushi. So, you know, people, they're calling Mushi the weak link. But they just decide to give him the off lane. Mushi has the Firefly, so you can't actually trap him inside the shards. But well, they do have the silence, and the sad thing is that Firefly, it does get rid of the trees, but Scam trying to turn it around, misses with that level 2 bar strike, and now he's silenced up, they're gonna actually have the stun for him with that install, he's caught inside the ensnare, is he able to get away, they have the detection print on the dust, so he's not gonna be, be fine inside that sandstorm, two people, very low here, they, what point do they have, play hard, he does only have one point in the fun strike, he'll be able to get to the back, so he should be able to get the kill on New World Order. You would order trying to level out as much damage as you want. But Skem doing so well on the Sand King. But TP in a bit late. Just feeding over his life. Uh, I, I can't replay that black hole. Because I'm a bit late to it now. I, I should have done it earlier. <laughs> oh, they have the lasso over here. Onto the Omni Knight. They have Zephyr coming in. The Maledict too. They have enough damage. It is a fair amount. He is healing. But then the Firefly is going to be more than enough to run down this Omni Knight. It's worth noting that although you do have status resistance, as well as heal with the Heavenly, J uh, the Heavenly Grace, thanks to the regen, it doesn't give you the magic resistance that you used to get with the Repel. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Zephyr already at the Arcane Boots. He looks like he's going to build the Guardian Greaves that he built again with his team. And they're just going to... Continue to push this, but in the mid lane, they kill that Tide Hunter once again. That we can catch. Let's see what happened here. The Tide Hunter, they, he just sits inside the Static Storm. Not really caring about it. They had it set up. And now the Naga, they pull him back. Sorry, it was a bit of a loot in the Static Storm. He's caught. And with the FE Center Bio Psyche, it's more than enough with the damage coming from Raven and Scab. Over here on the top lane... Ah, people trying to add me. Zephyr, is he going to go down? He's living. He's on 20 HP. The regen coming from that Helmsley Dominator is just going to be enough. And the glimpse back. He TP's in with the Tide. But you're not able to get off Ravage. And now Mushi, he's trying to pursue. He needs to be careful of that Inkspell damage. He is on top. They just need a little bit more damage. A few more right clicks. Coming from Playhard will allow them to be able to kill off that Grimstroke. He's able to do it. And Mushi cheaping out while he's in the trees. They're looking for the shards, but it doesn't catch on the Playhard, and he is going to be just fine. Playhard has been on point with these glimpses when people TP in. Ridiculous would have been able to turn that fight around with a Ravage, but he's just not able to do it. And just look at this, Raven, he's even farming the enemy jungle, has the Yasha and three Wraith Bands. This is, that's a lot of agility. I think he thinks he can kill the Titan, and you know, I'm not one to doubt him. 
I thought he was going to try and kill the Titan Hunter, but actually he just walks past him. Like, just ignoring him like he doesn't exist. A double damage here on Dead Fox. Maybe this means they want to fight. Enigma, still more farm than Mushi on Zephyr. This is why we love seeing. And they've caught him and once again. They have the lasso if they feel the need to use it. They will commit to it. But now they're being pulled back. Thanks to that snowball. They're going to get them over the cliff. They just need a tiny bit more damage on both of these. Ridiculous affected by the firefly. A few more right kicks and he will go down. So New World Order, he tried saving him. But they do lose their mid lane tight hunter once again. Gem. Oh, they have the glimpse, the vision. Being provided, I think, by the, uh, the sticky napalm. And they get the glimpse and another kill. No, actually, sorry. The vision was given by that ward. So they now they have given away for that ward. But I think you're more than happy to do it for these two kills. Geek fam, they are really on fire here in this game. Uh, the, the game isn't laggy, um, uh, Bon Marte. Uh, mine's fine. I think it must be you. Like, maybe turn down the quality settings or something? Because we're doing okay. Die. Over here, they get the silence over onto Scam. Is he going to walk away? He tries to kill it, but he's already used the virus strike to try and escape. They even pop the troll wall of the ultimate for the action movement scene. And I don't think Scam is getting away from this. The trap, they even blow the ravage. Duff and this one kill on the Sand King. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Okay, I I'm going to trust the majority of people. Because like, I... I I haven't dropped any frames. My CPU's fine. Like, uh, uh, my preview looks good. Yeah, everything looks good. Anyway, over here in the top lane, Zephyr. He does use the magic. They do need to be careful. He can't get off that black hole because he signs up. Has managed to kill it. Does he want to go for the black hole? He uses the Eidolon's conversions. There will be a lot of damage, but now they've brought the Tusk in. He is faking out the black hole. Is anyone here to be able to support him? No, they're able to take down the, well, the three position of Zephyr. Haste. No, no, no. So, <laughs> while Zephyr has gone down, it is worth noting the amount of space they've made for Raven is absolutely insane. He's already got his Manta style completed. He's actually building a Skadi. Yuji, you see a... Oh, this ward. It's going to be another easy kill over onto Ridiculous. They have the sun into the sandstorm. Oh, it's not quite enough. They haven't committed for the FP since that means Ridiculous is going to live. They use the Grimstone Ultimate. But over there, onto the Tusk. On the back line, the Batrider, he's coming. Ridiculous, he's living. He has the heal thanks to that. They've only managed to finish up the Tusk. Are they going to continue fighting forward? This ward over there, they bring back Dead Fox. Dead Fox, he does have his ultimate if he needs it. And now Scam, he channeling his ultimate. He is going to get it off, but is it enough damage to bring down anyone? A uh, Dead Fox. He pops his ultimate to be able to survive, and they do have the vision, but they use the Song of Siren. They're just going to wait till this Troll Warlord's ultimate has ended. They have more Naga Siren illusions. Black Hole! This is the setup! It's three of them to death! They're held all into position. And Ridiculous, he's going to go down, as well as Orca L-Y-M. This is what I talked about in the draft, the Naga Siren, the Song of Siren, being able to set things up, and then first Song of the Siren is bringing the game forward, and I have a present for you. I got a replay. We can see this fight as they bring the Troll Warlord back once again. They keep actually Mamang in the Static Storm. The Epi says it's not quite enough to kill the Omni Knight. And then Raven, he realizes they're all grouped up. He catches all four of them perfectly. They can only get a three-man Black Hole, but it's more than enough. They lay down the Midnight Pulse. And this Black Hole, the Troll Warlord's ultimate, it's over. They glimpse back the Grimstroke. <sighs> Just a pleasure to watch. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And a 10k gold lead at 50 minutes. Geek fam, they're making these... <laughs> they're making PJ Orca just in the grand finals look like any other team, any other random stack. Double damage. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. <laughs> That, that made me laugh, but uh, I have to be honest, Pitmunkle's layer production is like, it's really insane. It's really cool. Anyway, Geek Fam plus Play Hard. As the Sentry Ward. Do they have any detection actually on the side of Orca? Are they going to have to blow Ravage again if they try and kill the Sand King? Uh, dust should be on the Grim's Trek. Okay, so they do have some sort of dust if they want to try and kill him. So over here, they have... I have to say, these deep wards comboing up with the Disruptor has been so amazing 
like the wards over here. <laughs> they, they've just set up for so many kills with play hard. It's really like heads up play of how to play around the disruptor, realizing people try to get away to the high grounds. And if you have wards there in advance, you are able to get those kills. So Naga Siren, the ultimate, it is off cooldown once again. In about 70 seconds, they'll be able to just rinse and repeat the song into the black hole. Dyer's top tower is under attack. So the smoke breaks, they send Zephyr forward first, assuming he's the most tanky. Oh, he's snowballed himself right onto Playhard. It's not that much damage onto him, but actually they've left it by himself because the troll wall, they don't have a black hole. It's a big ravage. It's onto a whole bunch of them now. Mushi trying to escape. They're actually the song of the siren. They were able to live through it then. They're setting up the epicenter into the static storm. Again, this song of the siren every time it's taken them down. Dead Fox managed to escape from that, but with the magic, he's not going to be able to TP out. Raven able to fight all the way through him. And now they're looking for Mamang. He tries to go get away, but they have the clip. It doesn't matter about the fact you have an arcade rune because you're the only one left to rise while Skem comes from you. And they're even ca casting voice lines, sending out the tips. I really thought they were dead, but apparently not. The Song of the Siren into Static Storm. Who needs Black Hole when you have another ultimate to ca combo with it? I don't think I caught as much as that of that one with my replay. Because uh, I, I was only ready for the black hole. But oh my goodness. Yeah, you can see the end of it as he uh, tries to walk away on the troll warlords. It doesn't really matter. And then just a bit of the chase for Mamang. I, I have to hit my replay button a bit earlier if I'm going to get it sorted. But oh my goodness. They now have black hole, by the way. They didn't use black hole in that last fight. They burn off all the mana out from Ridiculous because he already has the Diffusal Blade here on the Naga Siren. But it looks like they might have gone a bit too deep. No, I take that back on the Grimstone. They have the black hole. He's thrown into hand. They have managed to kill off Zephyr. They buy back instantaneously on the Grimstone. They have no mana on anyone. Man, can he pop the ultimate? He doesn't actually even have it leveled. They glimpse back over Ridiculous into the Kinetic Field and it doesn't really matter. But that's a lot of damage over onto Play Hard. The nice fire strike on the back line. Troll Warlord with his ultimate is living for a little while. But he's sitting inside the sandstorm and he's going to go down. Task, it doesn't matter. The Grimstruck ultimate. They're working together. They're moving. It doesn't really matter. Do they have the fire strike? I, they do have it. So even though they got the stun, you're still going to go down. The Diffusal Blade but holds him down. He just leaves him to go down to Illusions. All the meanwhile, over here, Ridiculous casting around the trees. They do have vision for him with the help of Mushi Ridiculous. He really just wants one kill from this entire fight. They might have got Zephyr. But Seb and Raven, he's beyond godlike. Geek fam, they're having fun here in the past. And they call GG. Geek fam, they're going to the close qualifiers. They've done it on the back of the Raven Naga Siren. I do can indeed. Okay, guys. Let's have a look at that scoreboard before we wrap up the game. Raven, mid Naga Siren, 12 0 10. They, they just outlane them so well. I don't understand why Team Orca didn't swap lanes. They pick the Omni Knight to go against the Batrider, and then they just lane the Omni Knight into Skem. They didn't. They had Dead Fox into Mushi, which wasn't the winning lane for them, even though Mushi fed it away. It didn't really matter because Raven got an amazing lane versus Ridiculous. Guys, uh, uh, I have to say uh, thank you so much, everyone who has tuned in. For me today, this is the end of my casting. I ha I've i casted 16 hours yesterday. Uh, how long have we casted today? We casted seven hours uh, and a half today. Um, and uh, honestly, I just, I have to get out of the chair. I have to do some exercise. I have to sort out my life. But I'd like to say thank you so much for everyone who's tuned in. If you want to support me in my casting, um, just follow me here on Twitch. And follow me on Twitter at HasbazGains. If you follow me on Twitter... Um, it means organizers think I'm popular. I know it's so weird, but for some reason, that's like a measure of success to them. Um, and also, if you want to hear me cast the closed qualifiers, tweet at EpicenterGG. Say, I want to hear this random cast of Hasbaz casting some things. But everyone in the chat, thank you so much for all your kind words. It's been a pleasure casting for you today. A cast of TI10. Let's, let's hope there. And uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever time zone you are in. Um, and thank you so much, guys. For P PM, I think's a bit fine. Canoe, thank you so much for that follow here on Twitch. As well as Lopeg, I think, and uh, uh, Kuchero and Discoundrel. But with that, that's the end of me. Thank you so much, everyone. And uh, have fun. Watch some MDL. 
Uh, and could even, and again, congrats to Geek Fam. We'll see them in the closed qualifiers.